There, um, tweets out. Go. Hello and welcome to another Relay Station. I'm sadly your host this week, as Eris is still being sexually assaulted by a moose. We're not sure whether or not consent was involved, but the moose carried on. Joining me this week is the amazing, the impeccable, the irreverent Space Pope, as we like to call him, but he likes to call himself Nakara. Hi. We have the community ambassador. He's come out of the shadows once more to grace us with his amazing presence. It is Fastcart. I come out of the shadows, really? Relay? Relay. We have the best producer in the community, as far as I'm aware. He's the only producer I know, really. He's also producer of videos, amongst other things. Nitro, type that. The one and only. So, introductions aside, we're hit. Why? why I don't know. Hazo Seven Shepherd is doing deep into the barrel today. I, I, I didn't even know I was hosting this. I only realised that I was hosting this when Nitro said to me, "You got one minute and fifteen before we're going on," and I'm like, "Oh, I'm hosting." <laughs> and also, no, I, you got four thirty in the morning for this. I'm sorry. So let's I, I talk to Star was, Citizen. I, I, <laughs> I thought it was when he said that um we have fifteen seconds. And then he said, "Oh crap!" No, he didn't say "oh crap." That I'm that's my paraphrasing. Here. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> We're professionals. Oh wait, that's another show. So, Eric, hi. The Aegis Eclipse sale. Yeah. You have an article up um that's done an analysis on the sale, but could you give us a vocal TLDR? I have an article up on the sale. <laughs> Didn't you? Oh no, it was $150 million. <laughs> um, I have don't I, have you seen my mug? I really <laughs> like my mug. I like the contents of my mug. My mug is available now at other places. Eric, tell us about your $150 million article and was it tied in with the Aegis Eclipse sale? Uh, yeah, so uh, I, did, I did write an article last week about the... Uh, Starts with making the hundred and fifty million dollar barrel, Bar- barrel, barrier. Wow. Um, but it's not uh, just me. Yeah, apparently not. Um, basically, that was helped along a lot by by uh, like the first day the Ages of Eclipse is on sale, it made like seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, and over a million dollars in the first like forty eight hours. Um, that was obviously I didn't big help to getting to the uh, 150 million mark um but i sort of go into in the article i go into like the history of the crowdfunding campaign and uh where it started and how much they've made each year sort of what the biggest notables were for each year and um sort of where we're going from here um and uh it wasn't a long article but people seem to enjoy it so go check it out i oh, do actually uh, i, I actually it was pretty good lent I actually am intending on... The funny thing is, I thought you were seeing into the future there, because I think I actually am going to write an article about the Aegis Eclipse sale um, itself. Um, Simply because it's quite a bit different than the other concept sales have been. I think they're changing the way that they're doing them. Um, I mean, they had the one day of exclusivity for subscribers and concierge. And the sale is, uh, is... Instead of being 10 days long like they were traditionally, this one is... Uh, going to be 15 days long um so it's actually from the thursday to like two weeks later and then the friday so yeah um where they used to be friday to the monday not the next not the next monday but the monday after um so that's changed a little bit and i'm curious to see what effect it has and uh so i'll probably do a little piece on that anyway i'm gonna stop talking now no, no, talk. please don't. Everyone loves it when you talk because no one else knows these things about numbers and figures about SC more than you. Apart from maybe people who actually do work at CIG, but they're not people. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure the car knows more than they do too. Actually, I, I have to point this out because I thought it was pretty funny. Um, Fastcard and I noticed uh, a couple weeks ago that one of their counters for the, the counter for the UE fleet, it stopped working. Um, and I sent a message to the uh, the community team, being like, 
you should probably fix that. <laughs> and then a few days later, it was fixed. So, yeah. Um, it started counting again. Excellent. Um, and it, it looks like it was broken because its initial step after after they fixed it went for, went up about 17,000 ships. So, yeah, it was broken pretty pretty badly for a couple, uh, about a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> I, Hazo7, I, that's, I'm not passing that one up, is a good one. He says CIG counter is having a turbulent time. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Sure is. That's great. Um, so, ATV this week, uh, Frankfurt office. Yeah. The first bit of news that jumped out to me personally was the team growing to 74 employees already. Uh, they only just recently expanded the office to a max capacity of 85, 80, something like that. Yeah, right in around 80 somewhere. Um, mm. one of the got, things, yeah, bit, one, go ahead. No, uh, no, please, go ahead. I was just going to say one of the things that uh, immediately twigged into my, my brain was that now Foundry 42 between the two offices in um, Manchester and in Frankfurt is over 300 employees just for those two. No. Oh, wow. Um, Manchester is like 230 or so. So so what is CIG up to total? Uh, well over 400, but I'm not sure exact numbers. Probably in the 450 range, somewhere in there. Oh, How many can past, you name? They went past 420? They, I think they did go past 420, yes. Cruise right on by. It's the 27th of the 5th. Um, um, anyway Sprint's being started on human <laughs> combat with the goal of improving combat work uh, this was done under the AI so they're still looking at fleshing out the FPS combat, obviously it's not complete but it's nice to see and hear mention that they are looking at the AI specifically and the interactions with humans, how that's going to change things. I mean, uh, do we have any? We don't have any bots in... Um, nope. Not First Contact. Why do I want to call it First Contact? Star Marine. I don't know what First Contact's got to do with Star Marine. First oh, God. You're thinking, about, you're thinking about Star Trek, and then from Star Trek to Star Marine. Probably. I, I, I guess. Probably. He's I usually am. Hazo7 said Fidelity in chat. We all got to take shots now. Oh, I'll, yeah. Does I'll espresso take, count? I'll take my, uh, I'll take my <laughs> shot of uh, Coke Zero. But, Wait, look at my Kool Aid. I'll get it later. So, if this is part of, obviously, this is part of subsumption, but this is just a part of the combat that they're showing us. Do you think this is a reflection that other bits of AI are in the same sort of state? Or do you think that they're starting with the combat and lessons learned from development of the combat will be applied to bartender, sheep herder, nerf herder, whatever? What'd you call me? Um, <laughs> Only I we can say that word. I don't think you can necessarily draw parallels to the whole AI system from what they're doing here. But what it, what it indica indicated to me is that they're trying to get the combat into a final state for a squadron. Because um, that's their their stated goal here is to get the combat into a final implement a final state for the game. So um, that's that's the direction I went with it in my head anyway. One thing that I dug from the ATV is I saw the turret controlled by the AI, and that hmm. gives me confidence to hire NPCs for my ship to control like gunnery and stuff like that. Because I mean, you know, I haven't played the uh, pirate. Um, for him that I've done the Vandal Swarm a lot. But um, I don't know, it's like hiring NPCs and the quality of NPCs that get confident. Like, you can't um, always have people on their ship pirate, pirate, um, maneuvering and stuff like that. And they did say that they uh, did some work on the modules that allow uh, like a, an AI or a turret to interact with each other or the AI to get out, the person to get in and AI to bugger off and make sure the furry dice aren't going to catch fire or something. So it's a very dynamic system, but it's it, it's so dynamic and so complex that it's probably going to be buggy as all hell when that comes out. I, I Someone <laughs> uh, confused actually said, yeah. you know, it's a brilliant system. 
but it's so intricate that the bugs that we'll see out there will be very interesting. Uh, yeah, I would definitely think so. Um, that's sort of... It's going to be kind of an interesting thing to see, you know, what what kind of strange behaviors uh, pour out of the subsumption system. Um, definitely should be some fairly odd bugs. Hmm. Like Miles, at Miles Eckhart just suddenly starts running across the surface of Delamar towards the horizon. <laughs> Never to be seen again. And also, balancing is going to be interesting because you know sometimes you can have like an OP NPC, and you can have a nerf NPC that's really underpowered. So that'll be something they have to work on too. That's a good point. I mean, talking of balance, because Squadron and Star Citizen will be sharing assets. Do you think that crossover will extend to such um, that uh, a Hornet in Squadron 42 versus um, a Vandal Scavenger, let's say, in Squadron, take that into uh, Star Citizen, the MMO, will it be the exact same fight, or will Squadron have different stats because it's a single-player game? I think think that it will be, I think it will be balanced differently because it's a single-player game. Just makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. isn't currently um, aren't the Vandal ships in Vandal Swarm a lot weaker than the ones yeah. that players have? Yeah. And no, the ones I would. Uh, have aren't very good either. I mean, yeah. no. But I, I, I mean, would just, I would just expect. I don't think that they'll be able to balance them perfectly so that the single player game and the MMO are the same. Um, that's really hard. I, I mean, imagine, imagine going to get a kinship. And the single player game, and it's just you and some, you know, um, wingman, NPC and wingman. But you do the same thing and start citizen. If you do the same thing and start citizen, you can be like a whole fleet. So I, I, the kinship is probably going to be a lot more beef, or beefier, and um, in, 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 in PU. Mm-hmm. But I agree. to count to play devil's advocate, though, if you balance the squadron, if you balance the squadron, if you balance the single player experience the same way you expect the MMO to be played, then you're saving time and hassle because you know you you you're doing the balancing then and there. I, I see I, what you're saying. Yeah, but I, I think do, game. I understand. I, game I just don't think, think it's possible. I think gameplay will take more of a um, priority than you know making everything easier. Mm-hmm. Um. Air traffic control system being worked on, adding conversations, smart system for assigning powers, blah, 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 blah. So is this just for AI or is a, is this going to be uh, when a player ship comes into range and he's got autopilot on, the engine effectively takes over and plonks you onto a landing, taxis you, et cetera, et cetera? Um, that wasn't really, at least that wasn't my interpretation of what, what they were saying. What they were saying was that they were creating a smart system that, that allocates pads for landing, sort of similar to how Elite Dangerous does, um, where you know you you request permission to land, and they're like, "Go land on pad four. and if you try to land on pad five, they kill you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think that's more the direction that we're they're going, and it was just sort of uh, smart management of the existing pads. So, at least that's my thought. What did you guys think of it? So. Um- I'm not going to be able to plug my Samsung into the network, then. It's not that kind of smart thing. Well, you mean, no. maybe you stand some Samsung Pay, because Samsung Pay goes everywhere. <laughs> it's true. Um, I, oh, that, 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 oh, that brings us very nicely, to be honest, to, to the... Uh, bit. I, 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 I had a bit of a nerdgasm over this, and it's such a crappy small little detail, but the dynamic advertising billboards oh, around um, oh, Port Osa, I thought that was cool. I was oh, actually yeah. wondering how people were going to uh, uh, like take to that. I was wondering, like, I, oh, that's kind of weird. But it's so like true to life, though, because we... Pretty yeah. much do it right now, but instead mm-hmm. of instead of oh the ad on the side of YouTube is for an item you were looking on uh, uh, looking at on Amazon yesterday. Now it's going to be like this billboard's going to follow you around, and it's only going to show you you know you know shoe ads because you went to the shoe store yesterday. Yeah, but I mean that, that could that could become embarrassing after a while because imagine be. if, if you if you look up something that you don't want that you don't want other people to know about, you know. And well, that, you, you, that's already going to be happening with your mobile glass anyway. 
Like other people can see your mumpy glass when you're using it. So. Oh, so that's your fetish. Okay, I got it. 15 minutes is all it took before we descended into the gutter. 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I survived 15 minutes. That's the important part. That's true. So we got you for the rest of the show. Hmm. Um, I mean, I think last time, I, no, the time before I was on, I, I think I mentioned about ad, actual companies advertising in Star Citizen and then they showed us that. And it, that, that sort of got the potential. It, it, it gives me um, a bit of a Blade Runner vibe. You know, I, I can easily see a Coke advert there and then they go out of business, nearly. I can see that happening. And it, it adds a bit of depth to, to it. No, I, I think that, it's that, good. That's just me. Um, um, I also really love the uh, the Vanduul attack. That yeah, was I was cool. going to say that. The, um, the next part that comes uh, up with that. And people people were confused. Well, not confused, but were wondering what ship they, those were. Cause, um, so it turned out to be a Ken ship and a driller, I believe. Yeah, that definitely a driller on the bottom, but I was wondering what the top one was. Driller's on the bottom. That makes sense. Um. <laughs> Um, so one thing actually, it's a tiny detail, but you can see it when the clip uh, restarts. I, I do like the, like the stylized name for Port Olisar. Like it ha- had its own like sort of logo. That was kind of neat. Um, but no, I, uh, I thought it was think- really good. It, th- and this is a kind of knock on stuff you get from the render to texture. Like it's such a good tech to implement. It's probably very hard though. <laughs> My my but wondering, once it's pl- I mean, my my wondering though is like, they they said that it was going to be a proximity thing, so would it be that when you're standing, like, say I'm I'm a Pepsi drinker, Nakara, you're a Coke drinker, if we're both standing next to the same billboard, does do you see a Coke <laughs> advert and I see a Pepsi advert? Or does it just like show one or the other or whoever I think, walked up to I it think, first? I think they'll swap after like ten seconds. Um, yeah, it wouldn't. I don't with know. the way that they're setting up the engine, they don't want you to see two different things. They want everything to be unified so everyone is yeah, seeing the same thing, like animations and all. It could be just a, a new neural brain. thing. <laughs> That's why you gotta wear ten for your hat. Yeah, man. How, how much cold medicine have you had today? <laughs> <laughs> Not enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I say it would probably, I don't think it's um, too far away from real life. Um, you know, like automatic doors. Look at the way that they work. So one person goes near it and they'll open up for a while and then they'll just close. It doesn't go for each individual person. And this is the international sign language sign for automatic doors, by the oh, way. Oh, okay. I'll do um, that. Just so you know. And then... So if it's in game, it's probably just going to pick one random person. You know, it's like whoever comes near it first. Oh, he likes shoe bin shoes. Let's show him <laughs> shoes from the shoe bin. Oh, and, I just you know, that advert the plays its loop. And then next person comes along and then they, they get next generic pun. I just want to be the like... The is so okay, disappointed in you. Okay, just, okay. No, we now, now, we now <laughs> absolutely have to have a shoe store in the universe called Shoe Bin. <laughs> I just want to be Or a pastry through, store. I want to be walking through Area 18 with Shiv and Shiv just goes by a billboard oh, and goes, no. try new master mate. <laughs> <laughs> you promised you wouldn't bring the master mate to Relay. <laughs> Um, I think that's like the ninth time it's, it's been brought to real. Yeah, <laughs> you're good. Oh man, okay. I had no hand in it, but that's oh. the point. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, lighting. So lighting work. Light, light, lighting, lighting. Okay, lighting, lighting. It's both lighting. lighting. I, um, I, 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 again, it's it's another one of those subjects that when you say oh lighting or something, like that, it sounds as dollars whatever and you think that's not going to be any good but it it makes such a dramatic change to the way the game looks and feels i think i think anyone who watched last week's atv stopped thinking that if they already if they did beforehand (laughs) Hmm. this is true but just just seeing like sorry fast go ahead i was going to say some stupid work like my my feeling on lighting at that to darken it better (sighs) continue on 
Wow. We got, we got um, a fly through of the, uh, the table switched on me. So a, I have to say, I'm very, very impressed with how the um, the uh, outposts are looking. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. They're gorgeous. Very they, nice they look less generic as I was worried they were going to look. Uh, I agree. And I'm really curious to see how, like, because there will probably be quite a few on each um, surface. So I'm really curious to see how much rep- or, uh, repetition you end up mm-hmm. with. Um, you also, mean that you only... Sorry? No, oh, no, go ahead. Well, uh, on the repetition side, they need to... They were experimenting with the... To get the amounts they need so it looks individual, but it also does need to kind of look um, somewhat uh, reproduced around the universe it, because by its very nature because they're prefab habitation units, so they need to keep the same style as well as make it interesting each time. But it, 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 it's it's um, I, th- I think 3.0 is the fruition of m- many core texts. It's just the very first bit from here. It's much easier for them to add because they're not writing code from scratch for 64-bit floating point unit. They're now writing to take advantage of that, which is much more standard to the industry. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just picturing and- some guy rambling on. Chris Roberts coded Star Citizen in a cave. With a box of scraps. <laughs> I get that reference. <laughs> that was amazing. No, but on, on a serious note about lightning, oh, I mean, oh. the, the, um, the lighting in the room and stuff like that, it, it, it's okay for me, but I was really impressed with the, with the planet, the, the lighting on the back, the back of the planet. You beat me to it. Mm. That, that, that's what got me. Um, no, the uh, adding the night skies was... Yeah. Really cool. I think it. Uh, I think it's great for gameplay, and it actually looks really nice too. It also allows you to see that sort of outline of the world. Uh, in uh, base chat, we hamster highway. Uh, he said that he was hoping to see the way that the atmosphere was uh, implemented. Oh, how could I explain this? It ba- basically, like if an atmosphere is breathable, it should be blue. And he was hoping that the engine will be able to render an atmosphere blue because something about nitrogen oxygen atmosphere makes an atmosphere blue. I, they mentioned mm. they're going to do that, I think. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I mean, they did say oh. that they're implementing atmosphere effects, didn't they? But they haven't gone into much in the way of specific details. I mean, right. at least about that bit. I think, I think I'm, I'm switching around. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Also, I forgot. I forgot to. Uh, I forgot to render out the pretty planet thing. I forgot to do. I. I forgot to get the B-roll it's okay, night, of the planet. It's all right. I we all know did. what I a planet looks it. like. Yeah. Get a, two, get a piece so of paper. Pretty. Draw a circle on it, and that is a perfect representation of a planet as the Earth is flat. Oh. I didn't know where you were going with that one, but that was a good ending. Thank you. Wow. Um, uh, so can I, can I step back for a second? Of course. Um, <clears throat> I know we've heard about a bunch about it before, but uh, the whole thing with the doors and the depressurization is so cool. How like you open a door like and the that. oxygen level equalizes between the two rooms. It's neat. That was and it cool. even has you know, I mean, it has gameplay implications as well as oh, of course, tech yeah. implications, which is pretty cool. I mean, do you? There, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to do what you do in um, Faster Than Light, where you can just put out an onboard fire by opening yeah, a window I on the spaceship. <laughs> opening a window. Opening like. a window. You mean yeah. sucking out the air? <laughs> no, 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 no. You mean letting the space in? You blow it. <laughs> the space comes in and blows the out the fire. In. That, that's one way to increase your space. Yeah. Oh, We've got more space um, on the did ship. Everyone s- did everyone see the new updates to the exterior of Levski? Absolutely. Looks good. Mm. Um, I did notice, and I'm because I'm just watching it right now as we talk. There's an. <laughs> it's not done. Uh, there's um, it's actually a spot where you can see an unfinished wall. It's just like the, the un untextured. Um, like placeholder. So still work being done, obviously, but um, 
they are uh, two months from release still. So two months. Oh yeah. I mean, texture work is compared to other things. It, it's not as difficult to implement the textures no. generally. I mean, it, it's basically artists come do art. Artist does art. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like art. Well, if that, if that were true, then like you know the the preview for that we got for the moon like six months ago or whatever it was compared to the preview that we have now though that's like a lot of texture work so eh. mm. Mm. Um, um, but I mean like so I, the sky above uh, above Delamar oh my so I have a question but if people have ex- everything if people ac- accidentally say, hey, I'm going to go land on Levski, can people say, um, and, and they're like, I'm going to go land on the, the moon of Levski, can people respond with, that's no moon, that's a space station? They can, no. but it may not be accurate. Oh. No, it's, it's, that's no moon, it's called Delamar. Oh. <laughs> 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 You know it's true if Nakara says it. Yeah. Um, also, I love that the like something that we didn't see previously the the rock formations they have on Delamar now with the sharp spires. Oh, that's pretty cool. Everything's looking a lot more natural. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it it kind of leads in with the um, the way that the rocks are done on the planets now. Remember the first implementation? It was yeah, this looks very nice, but you know the, the planet looked a bit flat. Some of the rocks weren't properly inside, but it was like oh, that's looking all right. And now that they've put that tech in, and not only the rocks just like plonked on there, and there's no no gap, but the rock formations looks really natural. It's mm-hmm. it's not just this sudden bump map. There's this natural incline and things and things look um more natural it, it's, it's nice to see these things it, it's yeah, natural it's, it's a um and, it's an amalgamation of different uh minerals and rocks and whatnot not just all one color and i'm no, looking at no, the, exactly i'm looking at the before and after on the stream right now and like the before picture you can tell it was like you know it wasn't quite there, but you thought it was close. But I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't think the improvement between the before and after was going to be that. Yeah. Great, yeah. That bad. That drastic. Yeah. I was like, all right, I'm going to have to squint to see the difference, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doc? Exactly. Also, Damar looks incredible. I cannot wait to explore Damar. It's amazing. I think we're all just itching to get into absolutely all of it. <laughs> well, I wonder well, how many of yeah. the planets are going to be in Squadron 42, the single-player game. Uh, right. We Well, we know it's in the Odin system, but not really sure what they're going to involve in the missions. Mm. Um... Uh, testing for the new stamina system. Did anyone have a look at the new stamina <laughs> system? Like... I know. Well, <laughs> as long as it's not like three seconds of sprint and then you're knackered for about half an hour, you can't jump over a piece of scenery or something like that. Like Something, it's hard to do. I mean, stamina is, in real life, it, it just completely varies, obviously. And it, it's something that games can just implement as a, E- e- easy solution is this bar. The more you yeah. do, the more the bar goes down and that dictates your actions. <laughs> Obviously, CIG are not going to just do something that simple and easy. So, what are you lot expecting of a CIG implemented stamina system? Yes, I, I you there know, on the bottom. I don't, I don't know about the, um, what they're really going to implement, but, but um, I'm hoping that Maybe uh, the more you do, you can improve you improve your stamina. Like you know, after a while, you can you can get to do more stuff before before you get tired. That's I, not, that's like Elder Scrolls. I like I know that there's unlimited sprint in like GTA, but GTA has that stat bar thing. I think there's unlimited sprint in GTA. I haven't played in a while. Um, no, there's not. Okay, uh, but there's that sprint bar where the more you run, the farther up your bar goes. And like, there's other ones for like the more you drive, the your car bar goes up, and I don't even know what a car bar does. Um, <laughs> but like, I feel like it's a bar where only cars well, can go. We 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 have a wheelchair bar, so 
Yeah, exactly. Mine's maxed out, though. Um, yeah, mine too. But I want, uh, like, I feel like that's going to be like an exercise type mechanic where the more you do something, the more cardio you do, the the more you can sprint. And it's going to be, uh, I guess it could, like, slowly diminish down if you don't do it as much. Kind of like in real life where it's like, yeah, if you exercise once a week, then you'll be healthy and you'll maintain a, a good amount of See, cardio. about that, 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 I think that's a bit too much. That's good. Too well, I know, but like if if you're running and sprinting around all the time, it's gonna count towards it. It's not like you have to go to the gym in order to get your stamina bar up. I think it would be funny if you basically drank and ate all the time, and you were like a merchant who only ever sat in his captain's chair. If you got fat and you had like no stamina anymore. Oh, chico, wanga, wanga, merchant man, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, new Del- uh, Patcher, Delta Patcher seems to be moving along into the system nicely. Yeah, uh, they're, they're talking. They're talking more seriously about it now. Um, mm. if you know what I mean, um, they like they're it actually sounds like they're doing serious QA on it. That sounds like they have a dedicated tester for it. So um, hopefully, my hope is that they'll have it ready for 3.0. Um, but we'll see. I, I, I love the idea. Sorry, go on, Pascal. I hope they have it ready before 3.0. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I love the idea of the QA tester testing out the launcher by going, well, download. Yeah. <laughs> It downloaded that time. <laughs> Download button check. <laughs> okay, Obviously, me... there's a hell of a lot more into it, but yeah, I love that idea. In the installation folder, see how long it takes to cut. That, that's probably more like what they'll do. Mm. You're uh, mm. breaking up quite a bit, fast guard. Say it again? You're breaking up quite a bit, that's all. Sorry. No, I was saying that... Um, that they they would re- probably remove one file in the installation folder and then do the tester the patcher to see how long it takes to catch it. If uh, it catches it. Um but yeah, I actually I actually expect the size of the game to increase with 3.0 as well. Uh hasn't gone up in quite a while, but I do expect a fairly significant jump for the next one. Um and then again throughout the year as they add more planets, um and how big was yeah, the hang I, module? Uh, I don't remember. 10, 11 gigs? 10 gigs, 10 gigs yeah. I think. Really? 11 gigs. Yeah, right in that range. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, right. you know, so it's, it's been stuck around 30 for quite a while, mm. but I think it'll probably be up to 40 or so, or yeah, maybe even higher. Yeah. Since 2.0. Yeah. Well, you know, like a couple of years ago, 18 months ago, they said that the whole game put together will probably be 100 gigs, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm expecting more like 20. That's a, that, like, comment was taken a bit out of context though at the time the guy was saying he wouldn't be surprised if it ended up being a hundred gig because of the uncompressed yeah, files and x y and z honestly, he didn't say first... it's likely going to be that's well honestly, nobody nobody that's... can tell at this point sorry fast go ahead hmm. sorry that honestly that wasn't the first time they addressed the issue that's all I was say. um mm. but i i mean Honestly, I'm having a very hard time understanding how it wouldn't be at least 100 gigabytes. Yeah, really. Me too. I, it just doesn't compute. I don't understand how they could keep it under. I mean, if, you, um, if, you're, if you're talking about separate Star Citizen versus Squad 42, sure. Talking about both of them together, no, it's going to be over 100. Even yeah. still. Uh, that, yeah. Even still. Um, yeah, uh, actually, that's a really interesting. I thought uh, Doom Centurion had there. Will your stamina increase faster in highly oxygenated environments? That'd be very interesting if they went to that depth. And if you fly your dragonfly down there, does it get really big? <laughs> that was both a, that was a science joke. <laughs> that's amazing. Joke. That's an amazing <laughs> joke. I love that joke. Oh wow! That was certainly unexpected. Um, that was crazy. Nakara. I believe you have some education and entertainment for us. An edutainment, if you will. Yes, I do. Uh, yeah. So we're doing that right now? Sounds good. Yeah. So. Um, 
I talked about this a little while ago, but there's a there's a new company on the uh, scene of rocketry called Rocket Lab, um, and they have a rocket called the Electron Rocket. Um, what sort of stands it apart from other rockets is um, its engines are almost entirely 3D printed, and they feature electric pumps that pump the fuel through the uh, through the engines. Um, that's actually I, I suspect that's where they got the electron name for from. But anyway, they had their inaugural flight um, two days ago. I think it was the twenty fifth of May, um, and they're launching from New Zealand. It's a gorgeous launch site. It's called uh, the Mahia Peninsula, and um, you can see the uh, gifts there of the launch. And uh, pretty. So, first launches of rockets almost always end in failure. There, it's really hard to get all of the things nailed down prior. Um, I mean, nailing things down is very counterintuitive to rocketry. I find. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I mean? um, it's very hard to get everything under your control. Um, and understand exactly how the rocket's going to perform without launching it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, mm. I mean, counter so, to the normal phrase, it is rocket science. Oh, exactly. Um, for it's example, not brain surgery. We talk about SpaceX quite a bit, uh, quite a bit on here. Um, SpaceX's Falcon One, which was their first rocket, the first three launches failed. Um, the fourth and fifth launches were successful. Um, anyway, all of that disclaimer, um, the first flight of Electron was very successful, but it was not completely successful. Uh, the first stage performed exactly as they'd hoped, which is a huge part of it, because usually the first stage is a problem. A lot of times, uh, when rockets first launch, their first stages explode. Yeah. Um, so the first stage performed perfectly, um, uh... Stage separation went perfectly. Uh, the second stage ignited. Fairing separation went great. But the second stage did not perform the way they had expected. So it the rocket reached space, uh, basically, as they had thought it would. But it did not enter orbit because the uh, second stage was unable to push it into a circular orbit. Mm-hmm. Um, they basically are calling the test basically a 99% success because it, almost everything went perfectly. So they're going to uh, now look at um, the second stage performance, and then uh, they have two more um, test flights coming up before they enter commercial service. Um, they actually basically said that they're more confident now to move up their commercial program. Um, and uh, it's just cool to see this. Uh, the, the Electron rocket is small. It's much, much, much smaller than... Uh, something like the Falcon 9. It is uh, going to be launching payloads on the order of about 500 pounds. Um, that's about its max payload to a three, about a 500 kilometer or 500 to 800 kilometer orbit, and uh, which is a low Earth orbit. Um, and it's just much more affordable for companies that have small satellites they want to put up there. Uh, it's about four, f- just under five million dollars US, whereas a ride on a Falcon Nine is sixty-two million, which is actually oh. also also considered inexpensive. <laughs> um, anyway, I thought it was really cool. Uh, gonna keep a track on Electron and Rocket Lab, um, and uh... <laughs> yeah, I was kind of jumping around the screen a bit. That was funny. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, it was it was a it was a cool achievement. Um, it's good to see another launch location in another country as well. Uh, New Zealand's very very stoked about their budding space program, um, and uh, you know all the best. Kiwis in space. Ah, oh, I was going to make that joke. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, tying back into a previous edutainment se- section, I did um, one of the. Um, one of the competitors for 
the uh, Google Lunar X Prize is launching on a, on an Electron rocket towards the end of the year. So if everything continues to go well for Electron and the next two test flights are successful, they may actually get that off the ground. Um, there's been a lot of doubt over whether they can actually get to a commercial launch that fast, but they might pull it off. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for listening. I, I, I'm, is anyone else kind of hoping that this is going to lead to New Zealand having a space program so they can call it the Kiwi Space Program and thus KSP? Ah. <laughs> uh, absol- absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think they'll be able to do they'll be allowed to do that, but it's an interesting idea. Hey, you don't own acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Did uh, did anybody see the images um, that China took uh, after they landed hey. on the moon? Absolutely. Um, those images are about four years old, but M- Emily Lockdwalla, who's an amazing um, sort of proponent of space. Um, in North America, basically got her hands on all of them, um, which is, I think, about 45 gigs worth of images. Uh-huh. Went through them all, categorized them all, and posted them all on the Planetary Society website. So go to the Planetary, I think it's planetary.org. Uh, go to the Planetary Society website, you can see them all there. And there's, like, beautiful high-resolution in- pictures from the surface of the moon, um, which you've never really had before, because cameras in the 60s weren't great. <laughs> it, it looks so weird. I know, because no, it's like you've, I don't know. We've never seen anything in a high resolution camera uh, under an unfiltered sun. <laughs> no, I know pictures of Mars that are quite high res. Oh, and that's, that's how they from, uh, from demystified the Cydonia mm-hmm. face. And it turns out it was just a mountain, and people actually were surprised. Yeah, we they have, mean uh, they have a mountain. We- <laughs> We've uh, that was quite a while ago, but uh, yeah, curiosities, curiosity, and opportunity and spirit all have captured some amazing pictures from the surface. Is there anything anyone else would like to talk about from you know the week's development? Uh, yes, please, Nakara. <laughs> um, so I have to say, I gotta give my. As soon as I saw that first image of the Aegis Eclipse under the tarp, I'm like, that looks like a B2 bomber. And I thought, yep. I, I was so happy about that because, you know, when the ship shape, they're like, it was the B2 bomber. We basically just took it and messed, around, messed it up a bit. Yeah. And that was it. It looks nice. I mean, it's, uh, you can see a bit, bit of B2 bomber in there as well as um, the Sabre, which they did mention as well. Uh, Nitrate, you're quite a fan for Saber, aren't you? I am, yes, I own one. <clears throat> so what do you think of the B2? Uh, Fuck off. All <laughs> of the Eclipse. I love the Eclipse. Um, I love Delta Wing ships. Um, I think they're beautiful because I actually, like, I, I love watching documentaries and stuff about Delta Wings because they're highly unstable to fly in atmosphere. And so there's a lot of engineering and design work that goes into making them to where you can fly them. So the B-2 bomber is actually highly um, computer-like controlled because it is highly unstable in atmosphere. And the pilot is like kind of at the whim of whatever the computer's doing. And it's an amazing (laughs) ship. So like when ships come out and it's just a flat wing, I love it. Uh, Like there's a, I don't remember the model number. Um, but there's an old German plane that went into prototyping uh, near the end of World War II, but never actually saw combat. It was called the Horton Ho, and it was a Delta Wing that was made for um, uh, like stealth runs. Uh, it wasn't a bomber; it was a, actually a stealth fighter, and uh, it was a so Delta what? Wing. It had two so what, jet engines. Sorry. What makes a ship a Delta Wing exactly? No vertical the wings. The shape of the wings is a triangle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That and no vertical wings, I think. Like, or very small vertical wings. Um, but the Horton Ho, it was very interesting. It was covered in aluminum. The inside structure was all made of wood. And it was built to fly in really fast and under the radar. Uh, that 
thing. Yeah, they hated flying. They, they made a couple, of, and the mm-hmm. German pilots hated flying mm-hmm. it because it was a death trap, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, I think they only made, like, two of them, and only, like, one of them was flown. And it, it crashed, and the other one never flew, and it was discovered by Americans, um, and it's in a museum now. So. Oh, cool. Um, it's... Uh... Looks like it's in the Smithsonian. Hmm. Okay. From what I'm reading here. Uh, and it was the Horton Ho 229. Uh, okay. I thought it was... Thank you, Pappy Boyington. So what year, what year did it come out? Uh, 19, 1944. Right at, okay. near the end of the war. Okay, wow. Anyone um, else? Anything else? Oh, I really like the... the design of the wings and how they how they go like spread out to be full size when it's in atmosphere and then they tuck in when it's in space to reduce its profile thought that was really that's cool pretty, it, is that uh, some knock on effect tech from the Reliant and John Scout I think with the folding ships they'll be using mm. the same tech to just to fold the wings because um, uh, the super well the Hornet and Super Hornet those wings also fold but they're on the old tech system. I think it was based on proximity to something. So they would get broken a lot, um, which did lead to errors. Uh, but the new one, uh, the new tech for that seems to be, I, I have no idea, but it, it seems far more reliable than whatever the Hornet is currently using to move its um, wings. Mm-hmm. No, Carl Scott's camera isn't broken. He's going for the new world record for the Mimery. <laughs> Mimery. Steering cut this, go. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> my feelings on the eclipse is that um, I like the design. I really like the look. Um, if if it were cheaper, um, I might I might get it, but it's too um, too specialized for me. It's, it does just one thing, does it really well, but it's not something that, that I'm really interested in. But I'll probably get one in the PU when I can when I can afford it. But uh, as far as getting it now, no. But I do like the idea of um having big torpedoes. Island, just a little bit smaller ship taking on bigger ships, so that does appeal to me. The idea of a stealth, stealth bomber feels me much like Nitro, but I'm just not going to get one at the moment. I if if it was a little bit cheaper, yeah, and if it was able to be modified a bit more, I'd probably get one because I I have no use for a stealth bomber, uh, and I really like the look of it. So if I could like turn it into some kind of like bat wing super high speed like stealth fighter that i mean yeah it's not gonna have very much guns it's, you know you can't really upgrade weapons without changing balance basically but. if you can turn it back into a saber <laughs> yeah but I, I just well Liz, i don't really care about a ship's combat ability i just like making them go fast <laughs> oh fair enough fair enough uh i, I have to t- i tend to agree it's a Damn good looking ship, but it's it is too dear if you are thinking of um, not you know if you're not seriously into this game mm-hmm. or something like that. It's a little bit too dear. So nitro, in uh, order to make is, it go fast, you want to make a, you want to paint it red instead of black. Very true. I think a bright red stealth ship would be kind of a uh, contradiction in terms. <laughs> oh, not necessarily bright red. It could be darker red. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the red of Nakar's shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you hide behind a red dwarf, you'll be fine. Yeah. God. Do really bad. Um. Questions. Questions. Yes, questions, questions. Questions. Please ask us questions. questions. Please. Um. We'll start with one that didn't get asked last week. Apparently, um, from Preach Man, who who is apparently still here. He asked the last question. Last time, and he's asked the first one this week. So I, I almost wish I could give you a prize for that. You just get a mention, I'm afraid, Preach Man. Well done. Uh, Preach Man, what do you think about the recent announcement that CIG is intending to use Vulcan instead of the X-12? It's much smarter. Long term. Mm. Yeah, My thoughts. I mean, that's the reasoning more, being... Oh, gosh, sorry, Fast Cut, go ahead. That's a little bit more into, into development and... Um, um, development of the um, engine and stuff like that that I'm really in, um, into, but 
it's fun. It's just, they make the game easier to code and make it easy, come down back. I'm, I'm all for it. So for for those who are uninitiated, Vulkan is a uh, is a graphics API similar to DirectX 12 um, in that it, it's much what they call closer to the metal, um, m- far more low level, and 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 you can control and harness the graphic the the power of a graphics card a lot easier. Um, now also makes much better use of of uh, multi core CPUs. Um, than uh, than previous graphics APIs did. Uh, the big upshot with Vulkan is that um, DirectX 12 is basically bound to more or less Windows 10, um, whereas Vulkan is very similar in its abilities, but um, is all across every platform. So from even from mobile to uh, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows uh, Windows 10, uh, Mac, Linux, and they don't have to change graphics APIs. So, so what you're saying... So the reason for that is it's open source, which is always a plus. Yes. So what you're saying in is Star Citizen on mobile in the future. Um, <laughs> it might it might actually allow them to take to make use of Vulkan for the uh, the app, which. Yeah would be really cool. I, and I believe that Vulkan was based on the AMD Mantle architecture because it was AMD that mm-hmm. developed Vulkan. Mm-hmm. It took parts it. of it. I believe the I believe the heart of um, Vulkan actually comes from the old OpenGL. Um, really? But it, de- it definitely integrated... Uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's similar Isn't to... Isn't OpenGL Open- still knocking around, though? Not really. It's more uh, or less uh, Vulcan now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like, like Vul- um, Vulcan, Vulcan was originally referred to as the next generation OpenGL initiative. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, 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 OpenGL next. Um, uh, but it is uh, basically the de- the main developer of Vulcan um, was the main developer of Mantle. There's a lot of pieces that moved across to Vulcan. I mean, so I'm just glad. Kind of carried on the Mantle. Yeah, exactly. I'm just glad Spock had a new home to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making that. Thank you. Um, um, and Preachman asks, what... Oh, sorry, Nakara, Vulcan, go ahead. Vulcan has all of the benefits of DirectX 12, but has, but then goes even further to have the benefits of being uh, platform agnostic. So that's helpful. <laughs> and that, and it's... Oh, no, never mind. Oh, never mind. They ignore me. <laughs> um, what do you make of the comment that they are trying to replace a Kaisera AI? I know uh, that anyone yeah. to be expected. Yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't heard the the name Moon Collider in like two years. I kind of so. miss those guys. <laughs> you mind us what Kaisera is and everything? Kaisera was the AI. The, it's the current AI that's implemented in Vandal Swarm and things at the moment. Uh, it, it's it, it did the job for now, but Subsumption's going to take the mantle, and Subsumption seems to be bigger and better than the Kaisera AI. So, do you and that's think... my direct X on the point. Oh, God. Do you think that um, their new AI with, like, ships and stuff will be more intelligent to where if ship stats are changed, the ships won't be running into asteroids anymore? Um <laughs> They, they're, not, they're actually Kythera supposed to stop that anyway. Oh, really? The way that Kythera worked, it had um, it was sending out, it was checking its surroundings all the time and supposed to be able to plot its way around an asteroid belt. The thing is, that I realized it, 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 it can, yeah, it can find its way through an asteroid belt, yeah, just about, but it doesn't know where the boundaries of the arena are. So it will just go suicide, fly through the edge. So if you want to sort of glitch and cheese your way through, there's a bit of advice for you, you cheating git. But Shiver, do you know what the odds of successfully navigating through an asteroid field is? Never tell me the odds, fast cap. Agent 1213, if I leave my ship in my hangar and catch a ride in a friendship to, say, Port Olasar, will I be able to spawn my ship there, or will I have to return to my hangar? Wait, is he saying a, f- a friend's ship or a friendship? I leave my ship in my hangar, 
he catches the ride. Oh, God, why does this read like a math problem to me? At 12.15, <laughs> he leaves his ship in the hangar. He catches a ride on his friend's ship that's travelling at about 9 LY per second in a southeasterly <laughs> direction. Uh, towards there's, Port no Lewis. South, there's no southeasterly in space. South well, I mean, <laughs> my question is... Basically, about the answer to... The answer to your question is, wherever you leave your ship is where you leave your ship. You yeah, won't yeah. be able to spawn yeah. it suddenly. Yeah, you I, could... was, I was confused whether or not he meant um, the P was like an, 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 an official launch. We're talking about 3.0. talking about 3.0, you can probably spawn it wherever you want. You're talking about the PU, then you have to, it, it, it'll stay, stay where, where, where he left. Uh, yeah. Considering he's talking about returning to his hangar, I'm pretty sure he's talking about the full game. Because yeah. the hangers aren't mm. in game right now, and they won't be in 3.0 either. Um, however, um, the I think th to our best knowledge, you would be able to summon your ship, I believe. So it might take a while, but I think you and can it, summon. It, I, from what I understand as well, they 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 won't just de-res your ship in your hangar and then put a timer on it, and then it reses wherever. It will be physically transported. That yeah. there, you know, if, if a mission will be generated, or there will be already a mission uh, generated where, say, a hull E is looking to transport a load of ships across, and that's on its route. That 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 could be a human or an uh, AI. I I don't right? think that's. I think that's if you're buying a ship, but I think if it's your okay. ship, I think your ship will actually be able to fly to you. But I'm not a hundred percent on that. But I think. Oh, what you mean, like Silver in the Lone Ranger? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, like a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you just say, go, nice. like, um, Aurora, come on. <laughs> you're just going to be walking around Art Court one day and then you just look around and there's this, you know, Orange and 300. Oh, shit, saw me. <laughs> <laughs> the ship's following me. <laughs> um, no, wait, one, one last reference Night Rider. Go ahead. Excellent reference. Will NPCs have conversations on our ships? They're That's better. a good question. I hope so. I yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I mean that, that yeah, that's a good question. I, I mean that I hope it's I hope it's just totally random and inane things like does my ass look big in this spacesuit? <laughs> yes. It tied in whether or not you your NPCs or stuff like that. Too, mm. it's it's a. It's a double-edged sword isn't it because it's very cool to have and if it's cig are going to do it they're going to do it but you're going to need a lot a lot <laughs> of um recorded I voice work to, to make it's that work get really annoying i was because i just yeah. want like well, if you don't <laughs> i want like a little uh inner thought option that is just shut up and you click <laughs> it and your guy turns around and he's like hey shut up and the crew's like damn okay fine <laughs> the inner thought system so detailed you you wake up you you log into the game your character wakes up and it asks you what sort of mood you're in fuck people i want to talk to everyone fuck people and then you just don't hear any npcs i just you just ignore them yeah you just give um, everybody the death stare of, as you walk by <clears throat> brivols 84 did you purchase the new shirt if so how do you like them the no one, anyone. The, I, I assume that's like the Polaris shirts, the squadron I shirts, or something. Oh, I thought they were talking about relay shirts. Yeah, I thought they were talking about. I yep. I we'll get into that. <laughs> but, no, I think I did. We'll any of the shirts, but, um, I didn't like the way the, the neck looked. I thought the neck looked too big. Mm. So, yeah, so um, the Polaris shirt I almost got because the, the neck looked okay in that one, but I didn't get one. And I recently looked. The shipping and handling, and, and it's like eight dollars from 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 mm. where they're shipping. They're good quality. I mean, I got the Polaris shirts the uh, first time around. They're nice shirts, a good quality. I always thought they were good quality, but I didn't this time. Uh, spaceship training wheels. <laughs> ATV showed a nebula in the night sky. Has there been any confirmation that the night sky slash starfield would show celestial objects in the verse in their proper position? I really like this guy. He knows his stuff. Uh, would show celestial objects in the verse in their proper positions. The nebulas will be in their proper. The nebulas will be in their proper positions. Now, whether the stars will be or not, I actually don't know. That'd be some. They should be magic stuff. 
that that's the point of 64 bit floating point is they can do that. Well, so, they're not yeah, doing the whole universe, can. though. They're, yeah, they're not they doing are. the whole universe, hmm. though. They're only doing a system at a time. So whether or not they're actually True. have the stars in the right place is... You can do that, though. Oh, it's, but it is a matter of whether or not hmm. they'll take that opportunity. But uh, for the most part, if you, if you can make out what an object is in the sky, be it a ship or a moon or that's no moon... It, it, it is literally <laughs> there. That is, that is, that is actually the rendered thing. Uh, if if you saw a Bengal in orbit, that is the actual Bengal. If there's a fight yeah. going on, you will see the fight in real time, which is pretty damn cool. We've already seen the nebulas in action, like how, how you'd see the nebula off in the distance, and if you quantum jump towards it, you will go through it. Um, or you can stop in the middle of it. Now, the only thing I, I have a question about is the stars. Everything else, yes, absolutely. The thing is, um, I'm, I, I'm my interest is um, the Endeavor has one of those modules that's like the um, it's an astronomy module. I forgot what it's called it exactly, but it's like the, it's a telescope. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking yep. um, that, that 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 gameplay will will tie into the, what, we're, what what we're discussing. Yeah, the CIG doesn't have to plot where the stars are supposed to be. We'll do it for them. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh. Heremus asks, how is the merch sale going? I'm not sure which merch, CIGs or ours. I think he has some ours. Um, I I think we've sold things, but that's about it. I'm not really Really? sure. Really? Have we? I suppose I'll take this opportunity now then. You've Um, sold more than one things. (laughs) Oh, right. If you two sample of mod here, isn't it beautiful? I don't come with mod. Um, if you two you know? wish for a mod, <laughs> such as this high quality, catch my order. <laughs> you can go there and get all sorts of various other things. However, uh, Jake Acapella wants me to point out, if you are a $5 backer or more on Patreon for us, you might want to wait until the 29th, as he will be sending out a promotional code for a discount via Patreon. Ooh. Uh, so I, 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 that seems to imply if you, oh no, my internet's dead, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 fine. I think it died. I oh, think it died. You died. <laughs> that, that one last packet of right. him going, oh, it's probably dead. It? <laughs> oh man. All right. Um. So. Moving on from our, our merchandise, the next question is, do you think atmospheric lighting on planets will downplay the use of flashlights on moons and planets' uh, dark side? Nah. No. We don't need flashlights or anything like that. You can't see that well. Yeah. Especially when going inside like a, a module or whatever without power. Yeah, I think a lot of the use of flashlights is going to be for things like caves and derelict spaceships and uh, and damaged buildings. Um, so the next question is female heads but no female animations for 3.0? Question mark. I think it would be terrible for 3.0 to not have some level of female character customizations. How important is this in your opinion? Very, because can you imagine how bad it would be if all the guys are walking around and they have like somewhat customized characters and then all the women look the same. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would, I mean, I'm, I would rather them get it right the first time than like implement it step by step, but who, who, who knows? I have to say, uh, the shot from last week's ATV where they had the female walking in the medium armor, uh, looked really good. So, they're coming along. By the way, I just have to say, it like from two weeks ago, Shiver, stop peeing. Okay, I'm good. What? Okay. What? 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 Nice. what? <laughs> um. So. Oh, <laughs> the stream. So I have, I, have a, an opportunity. I have a question. Like, and this can go for the male character as well. Can we have a sassiness slider for how sassy yes. we walk? Absolutely. <laughs> You gotta get that hip swing in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the swinginess of so your like, hips. To absolute top, you know. Instead of swinging arms, it's just <laughs> as they walk. That's that's if you have the sassiness slider flipped all the way up, and you do the middle finger emote. That's what you do instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
question, my question is, we've got a shack in the slider. Where is that in 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 or in uh, in relation to the Broke up a little bit there. Oh, what's that game called? Broke up a little bit there. Where is that in position in relation to the wiggle the wiggle slider? I knew you were making a reference. I kind of forgot. Conan. Conan. That was Conan. Yeah, that's what that game was called. I kept wanting to think Hercules. (laughs) Um, Uh, Agent 1213? Did CIG say that the character has lost its three modular bays? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of either. Uh, Agent, do you have anything you want to tell us? If so, tell us. What do you know? (laughs) I mean, if they've lost it, I'm sure they can find it again. It'll turn up. (laughs) Um, I don't like turn up. If it loses its three modular bays, then they will replace it with something else. So essentially the ship actually is doing what it intends to do. Uh, I mean, don't forget, default, it comes no cargo, no sensors or anything like that. It all depends on these Uh, modules. So character character absolutely has sensors. I thought it like varied depending on what module bay you're supposed to put in it. Oh, it, like, it can, comes it with like standard better, sensors, but, uh, but, but all of those hmm. those big booms that come out of it, those are all. Uh, uh, oh, I thought that was a comma ray. No, they're they're oh, sensors, okay. and and they're also to stabilize um, to stabilize it when it's jumping. Um, I like thought... going through jump jump points. But there's no gravity in space. How can you jump? <sighs> oh no, shit, you okay. tell me. The next question. I'm white, I can't. <laughs> oh. Wow. I'm going to let that one slide. Go ahead. I can do that. Do you think CIG should develop special equipment for low light environments like night vision uh, from Brivals 84? Yes. Can I, can I have yes. heat vision? Can I have heat vision and just like walk around the moon making clicking noises? <laughs> I get that reference. Thank you. I, I would do it, but ah. I can't. I can't make that noise myself. So, uh, um, go ahead, Shiver. I I think something like that could really add to uh, ground tactics. You would have a true night battle that you can plan uh things that are environmental hazards like a huge sandstorm you're going to need to be able to get through them and that creates the um the the chess game that chris has talked about before um the the environmental hazards bring in this extra dynamic thing so if you want to attack something you can wait for the cover of night or a sandstorm or you can just run in leroy jenkins it pretty much where you get Mm. chicken so, the next question I like. So, I'm, can I read this one? Yeah, of course. Did Brian Chambers just tell me I really, really need to buy a larger SSD for Star Citizen? Not mandatory, but sort of mandatory if I want my game to run all purdy and smooth. Yes. <laughs> I, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I what was that quote? Uh, mm-hmm. No. What yes, that yes, quote? And Come no. On. yes, and no. Yeah, but the same tech. It will work on a platter drive. Yeah. Mm. I, I well, no, I, I, no, well, I, and well, to no, be honest well, not, with you, uh, it, isn't it kind of redundant? Not for the tech that's specifically aimed at SSDs, it won't. Mm, yeah, but it's not like, I mean, isn't the tech kind of redundant, though? I mean, it's a seamless environment that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, can't you wait a couple of minutes longer to log the damn hell into the game? Until <laughs> until the game gets too big, I'm probably going to be putting Star Citizen on my M.2 drive. <laughs> oh, nice! Oh, you're so, so off. <laughs> uh, yeah, my my new computer will have an M.2 drive too. Yeah. Um, but <sighs> I would I wouldn't say that. I would say you should have Star Citizen on an SSD. That's my that's my recommendation. Now, do you have to? No. SSDs are actually really cheap um, right now. Yep. Like, um, yeah. No, and no, regular SSDs are pretty cheap. You can get a really nice Samsung one that has 500 gigs for like, I mean, well, I mean, it's 500 gigs, but it's about 150 bucks. It isn't bad. It's not bad. Uh, I I personally wouldn't put SC on an SSD because it's regularly getting updated at the moment. It, right now, well, I when the game oh, no, is no, completed. Oh no, no, not now. I mean, not now, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because you'll run out that. I'm that just clarifying. Lifespan pretty <laughs> fast. When you when you also this text not in the game yet. Um, but when you when the game is done and you're playing it every day, you should definitely have it on a SSD. It will make your life better. Yeah, I don't well, play so, very often, so I'm happy with it on my powder drive. Yeah, for me, I would I'd rather have like Squadron Forty Two on a mechanical drive and put Star Citizen itself on, on an SSD. I'm the opposite. Yeah, really? I'd put Squadron on the SSD because that's less likely to get updated regularly. Mm. That's just, but that is just my preference. That's just my and the, I I I I bought a fucking two hundred and fifty gig SSD just for Windows, and I put mm-hmm. nothing else but Windows on it. Yeah, I have a so don't don't take advice from me, kids. <laughs> but, but but I had I had two hundred and fifty for Windows, and I put and I have Star Citizen on it right now. But Dark Citizen is only 30 gigs at the moment, but when it gets too big, I'm going to have to upgrade to a bigger hard drive, bigger SSD, or put it on a on mechanical drive. Well, don't forget, by then, uh, a lot of the new SSD tech will have hit the market. There's um, a couple of middlewares that are coming up. I, I, I'm not sure. I think TLC is the standard, and NAND is the standard, but there was a third middleware that's coming up that basically doesn't cane the living daylights out of your SSD and makes it actually more reliable. Are you uh, talking about Optane? But that, you know, that's coming up. And then, no, that is another thing. That's that is cool. an entire that's new cool. drive. Yeah, this is just cool. the middleware. Okay. Okay. M- middleware is what uh, is what allows an SSD to work. Let's just keep it simple. And that uh, middleware, the new middleware that Sky made also improved the access calls and things like that, so it wouldn't because what kills your SSD is writing mm-hmm. and this wouldn't cane the living daylights out of it mm-hmm. but that is for a uh, that, that's something else entirely uh, Brivol's 84, how far along do you think spaceship and space station atmosphere is design, prototype implementation etc yes, for ships it's coming along pretty far you, you see how fast they're able to start building these things space stations they seem to still be struggling with a little bit you you know like the truck stop is not going to be in 3.0 um they've been working on it for a while i mean it's a huge station but uh i think they'll they'll eventually come along faster but uh, i think that's the one that they're currently more in the stage that we were in with ships a couple of years ago sort of yeah mm. Uh, Hazo 7, my good friend Hazo 7. How, I like him, how delayed do you think 3.0 will be? Will the reclaimer maybe get slipped in if it gets delayed enough? Um, I can hope. One always hopes that you can slip something in. <laughs> wow. I wasn't going to do that this time. I was going to be wow. clean. But no, Knight had to do it. I'm just talking about ships well, somebody's and Star Citizen updates. It. You guys are yeah. messed up. Jeez, yeah, that's us. Uh-huh. Calm yourself, Nitro. <laughs> Don't tell me what. To... <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Oh boy. So, what's the current date for completing the reclaimer? I'm going to take a look. Uh, I soon, I'll just so. give a generic catch-all answer of if it is ready, they'll throw it in. Yeah, that's a good answer. I yeah, agree. I mean, I it's the reclaimer, so you won't be able to do much with it, but. You can unless they have something, yeah. yeah, unless you can fly around. Hey, look, like... you can't do much with the Starfarer <laughs> either, but that thing's mad fun. Yeah, true. So, the Reclaimer is scheduled for completion in September, so I'm hoping not. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a heck of a delay, isn't it? That would be another month and a half, which oh. I'm hoping they're not that far out. But I wonder what other work they have to do on it. Uh, probably actually implementing it into the game. Like, they have the art done, but art is not making right. it functional. True. Yeah. I mean, the, the claim is a huge ship, so it's probably going to be gonna be buggier than um, smaller ships. And they have to, uh, put, rigging up the ship, uh, audio works, door item 2.0, uh, making sure that certain things are destructible, making sure you can't drop through parts of the floor, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's a pain you know, in the ass, you know? It's fairly work. What I would be really interested in is their completion date for Arc Corp is July 20th. Which is right around when it's supposed to be, right around when uh, 
3.0 is scheduled for release. Now, that would be a cool thing to slip in. <laughs> mm. uh, and, you know, watching that schedule each week, anything can suddenly change. So, you oh, know, yeah. it, fingers crossed for whatever you hope for. I'm just Please, really, Karen, it's not going to happen. I just really want to see the Reclaimer <laughs> flying around. Because yep. I love the giant nacelles that are, like, on a bunch of piston moving things it's so cool it's like a giant <laughs> oh it's so cool i'm gonna feel I like a, just, i'm gonna feel I, like a toddler flying one of those things like when i was a toddler i used to play with like construction equipment and i'd like play in the sandbox and i'd have like the excavator and like dig up so i'm gonna be like that but i'm gonna be like you know a 20 year old in a giant spaceship and they're gonna be like yeah it's the coolest thing ever <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining Nigel going back and forth. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, so seven. The upcoming Origin Six Hundred. Do you think it will be a direct competitor to the Connie, or will be more of a luxury type touring craft, or maybe something else? I have no clue. Fast car. <laughs> Dude, I have no clue about this. I mean, I've, I heard rumors, but, but what rumors have you heard? Go on, feel the gossip. I've heard it's going to be uh, Vandal uh, designed. It comes with seven free strippers and a massive kitchen. And then if you want a small petting area or zoo, it comes with about five different species of subturtle. It's going to be a two-sip and, and, and it's going to be a two-sip and a drop-sip combined. Yeah, one. And, and you can dock a Polaris in it. And it has a hot tub. Oh, I've got to say hot tub. For the idea. Polaris. You know, yeah. what, it'll, what it'll actually be is a flying spa, and you can go from planet to planet offering your spa services to the people who live there. It's going to be a, go. a combo party slash missile boat. <laughs> party missile boat. I like that. Yeah. See, um, they... I really don't know. The, the missiles... But I do know don't do a lot of damage but they do set off really big fireworks so like oh, and they don't go <laughs> they go <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh yeah uh what i do what i do suspect though is that the design of the origin 600 will inform the redesign of the 300 <laughs> that is my opinion <laughs> Tilu asks a brilliant question, and I've got a brilliant answer. Yes, there is no north-south in space. You can't use bearings like in armor for directions. How will you communicate with teammate? How will you communicate with teammates for directions? Can't say above, for example, since your mate can't be flying belly up from me. That's uh, not going to stop me. As every game I've said with my mate for about fifteen years, we go. It's over there. Jump there. I've got it. It's here. That's what's going to happen, and that's how it's going to work. Yep. I just want to mention. <laughs> Guns no, and glue, I, I completely agree. Missiles in the front, party in the back. <laughs> that's awesome. um, that, that, that's like I read this one, one novel, sci-fi military novel, where um, that if you if you're going toward the sun, they say going sunward. If you're going away from the sun, go go um um outward or something like that. So I'm that might shiver. be. I'm just going to be like, I'm going this way. <laughs> I do think that they will implement some kind of coordinate system at some point. They'll have to. They'll, I mean, realistically, they have to. Yeah. You will need bearings of some descript. But that, or, the, the, the issue is... Sorry. You'll be able to just send to your friend... Um, like, there'll be a thing in the game in your Moby Glass where you can go send my location. And then he can lock yeah. onto it with Quantum Drive and zip there. Now, but, I, I mean, if they did implement... Um, a bearings um, type scenario that that would encourage people to get better at being a gunner to shout out these things and to learn how to better use a system because if it's a little bit complicated something that not everyone can just do that gives value to people who just want to be a turret gunner or just want to be a navigator question yeah fair enough you you have like your know, port starboard aft and Front, whatever the front is, I can't remember. It's the only one I can remember. What's top and bottom? Like, what's above and below? Uh, dor dorsal, dorsal and ventral. Dorsal and ventral. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense because submarines need that. Okay. Yep. The more you know. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Oh, I need that gift. Uh, and in fact, if you actually go through the key bindings on Star Citizen, mm -hmm. it has key bindings for rebinding, uh, moving power to shields on the ventral and dorsal. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure it is. Um, Christians in space, the musical. Like what's <laughs> this question? Like what's been said in the past about how custom graphics could be like possibly applied to ships in the future? Could there be equal possibility for the same feature to be put in for weapons or suits in a Cambodian accent? <laughs> I'll try to listen to the question. All I heard was um, custom graphics on ships. What's been said in the past <laughs> right? about how custom graphics could be possibly applied to ships in the future? Could there be equal possibility for the same feature to be put in? Basically, can you do a bit of customization, like custom decal for your ship? Could that then they, be put on your gun or person? They really want to do it. They are trying to figure out a way to moderate it so that they don't have penises in space everywhere. Yeah, because... Just like, just millions of penises I, in space. I, 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 just that, that, that kind of well, they're not going to stop us playing. Billions of penises <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> no, um, I, uh, I assume it's probably going to be as easy as, like, sprays in Gmod. Um, because mm. in Gmod you just have spray, you upload a file, you hit a button, sprays on the wall, everybody can see it. Um, but yeah, moderation is going to be a key because I've played many games of Gmod where some guy walks up to a wall, presses the spray button, and all of a sudden there's porn on the wall. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. that's nice. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would feel I feel sorry for the person. Like maybe they maybe they hire or, 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 you know get a new position just for that. And I don't feel so sorry for that person you have to check through all that. Yeah, stuff. Uh, I think it, I think it would actually be really funny to do that job. I feel like you get desensitized to it after a while, though. Yeah, that's true. I think like, you'd be oh, fine. another penis. Can you okay. imagine like going to a party with that person and you're like, uh, you're like, ah, we're gonna, uh, you're gonna fall asleep and we're gonna draw dicks or pieces on your face. And it's like, I, I don't really care. Can I point out we're live. We're not having a conversation amongst ourselves. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> this, this is, is just like a conversation we have. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> have they come to expect anything other from us? Anything else from us? This, this is probably about right. <laughs> I don't know what you guys can pull off. Hazo Seven CIG are starting to look at locking down fleet purchases with moves like locking down zero dollar CCUs and saying they want people to settle on ship decisions so they can plan things around which ships are the most numerous. Oh God, the document goes how far away? Oh, oh ah. <laughs> You do work. You do work. I've got to just drag out this window. How far away do you think it will be until they do their final series and lock down ships to let into beta? Oh my good god! When's the flipping movie for this question coming out? <laughs> this summer. <coughs> oh my god! It goes In a on. world. In a world. Requesting Have you done off. this to me on purpose, hey, 07? <laughs> oh, I can't. The document doesn't even come as far as the question. Something about, uh, I'll kill you in your sleep, hey, 07. I will kill you. Uh, how far? Okay, is it okay. Delayed? Can I just answer the question? Yeah, I'm sure we could. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I think that uh, what they've always said is that at some point in beta they will announce you know two months from now we will lock down things. Oh, you, think they'll, you think they'll give a two months head, head notice? They better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, okay. That's one thing, but I think it's more likely to be. Well, they they've said that they would give us notice. Now, whether they actually yeah. do or not, it's a bit of a question. No, no, no. I, I'm trying to give us notice. I'm thinking how much, how long, how much of a notice would it give us? I'm thinking I think like it, I think it would be fairly significant. Months. And they would probably have a gigantic ship sale right at the end, like every ship ever made, almost. Um, now, I think we're probably, realistically, about a year, year and a half from that point. <clears throat> That's yeah, not too far out, then. I'm not sure when, when it'll be, but I'm hoping that'll give it... Two months will be a good, a good head head start for the notice, but I think it'll be short. For the notice. 
All right, let's try and go through these last four as quickly as we can. Good luck to me. Do you guys think CIG will add animations for changing clothes slash armor from Theramos? I, I'm inclined to say no, but then it's Chris Roberts, so maybe. I can see him adding in something, but I don't know whether it would be as in-depth as literally grabbing the boots and the character putting them on because they would have to record individual uh, motion sets for each I thing, mean, I considering could you could customize... I think they probably already had those 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 recorded already from you know. That just, I I'm, I'm you know what I'm thinking yes I think there probably will be no, I, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, none I of us can be sure. A but. generic animation that just plays to imply you know like a GTA Five kind of does, but maybe something a bit. I think your better. character should just start dancing and then like slowly morph into the new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> appropriate music in the background. Yeah, I was gonna say there was totally. some saxophone plays in the background. Yep, exactly. So what, what they do is uh, they have the phone booth that you have to go, go into. <laughs> is, it gonna be like, is it gonna be like the Deadpool teaser? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Heramus asks. I've read on Reddit that there are inconsistencies in the schedule report update. Everything's still on track. Opinion. I think it's fine. I think they just had typos. It happens. They do do that. Oh, Christ. It's another one of those novels. <laughs> Here Spaceship they go. Hold training on. wheels. Uh, can, I, can I ask this one? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> as, per, as per that earlier question, on Spectrum, a dev recently confirmed that there'd be absolutely no use of docking colors at launch, which is actually not precisely correct. Actually, it's not really correct at all. Um, this seemed to make people freak out and think mo- ship modules and such are in jeopardy. Uh, perhaps you'll end up just spawning your ship with the modules you want. No modules attaching slash detaching in real time, question mark. So, first of all, they said that there would be n- you will not be able to dock a ship to another ship in space. You will be able to dock to space stations. Um, and the reason for that is simply that two things that are moving through space, connecting them together, you're probably going to break it. Um, at least initially, they're talking about doing it post-launch. Now, do we, do I think modularity is in jeopardy? No. There are ships that are designed entirely around being modular. So, no. Modularity is a huge, huge thing to uh, CIG as a company. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? It, how do you do the endeavor without modularity? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it it got to such an extent that the prototypes, which were sold on eBay, I believe, back to CIG, were modular themselves. So, because you could have the keyboard, and then you could plug in the throttle, and then you could plug in the joystick, or oh, you could just have the oh, throttle oh, plug okay. into the. Oh, joystick. okay. I didn't yeah. know what you were talking I, about. I, I, yeah, don't look at me like I'm a nose hair in a Spanish omelet. <laughs> you're a nose hair. You're a nose hair in a Spanish omelet. Um, Hold on, I have what a is question. The, right, if we nitro, have, I'm okay. happy for you. And I'm gonna let you finish. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm pointing at shiver. Um, if docking, <laughs> if docking in space, hi shiv. Uh, if docking in space isn't um isn't an option anymore, can we still type at in space? Yes. Yes, but it's now become such an extent that you've got to ram into the ship, Star Trek Nemesis style. How is that different than normal? You used a docking collar <laughs> previously. Oh, that's what that's for? Okay. Last question. Uh, Agent 1213, what NPC's positions will be available for crew, science, Dr. Barber? I made that one up. Uh, pilot, space barber. pilot, navigator, turret, navigator, turret operator, um, fighter pilot, um, engineer, engineer. um, very likely some more random things like, uh, like, um, on bigger ships, you probably have people in charge of cargo, like loading and unloading. Um, depending on the type, like if it's a carrot, you'd probably need a sensor officer. Absolutely. So that's the science part. Doctor, absolutely. Mm. A cashier, um, a fry cook, a guy that yep. works the grill. Definitely. <laughs> um, well, keep in mind also for like Starliner pilots, you also have like flight attendants, basically. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different roles for NPCs. 
Oh, and soldier, you could even soldier. make your own job as Ruby Rod if you want. Oh, of, course. <laughs> of course, I would so get that NPC if that, if that, if that was a true NPC. I would they want that to NPC on my set. No. Yeah, space janitor. Wait, so the um, Scruffy, the Terrapin. Um, oh, my name's Scruffy. Um, the uh, the Terrapin that one has a sensor suite, right? That one's nothing like the Herald, right? It can't like um relay stuff it just is able to scan things relay yes um no it's a it's basically a very heavily armored exploration ship okay i was just wondering if i could do um radio transmissions from one i don't think so oh damn not unless well not, not unless that there's some sort of heavy modifications you can do to it i was gonna say you probably could but i mean yeah. i was just gonna well, use it for cargo but that's not an option anymore yeah right <laughs> Well, you, you you could have loose cargo, but you might die you know, into your yeah from your the G forces. <laughs> <laughs> cargo box takes off your head, you know. Yeah. yeah. Right then. Well, um, that, that, that's pretty much it. We, we can oh, hey, go over, far. but um, yes. Fastcart and Nitro, thank you for joining us. Uh, Fastcart, where where can we find you out in that internet land? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at fast underscore cart. You can find me on Twitch at fast cart. You can find me uh, most places at uh, fast cart. And I'm looking for my um my compare um my comparison um barrel in a moment. Uh, I had it, but I lost it. There we go. And I'm always that. losing your package. Yeah. Well, it's so big that um, that is the uh, comparison chart that I maintain, and I try to update it um, every ship sale. So have a look and hope you like. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, and you do a couple of well, you produce on the base, don't you, Fast Cut? I produce on the base on Cold Vision on Tuesday at eighteen hundred um, Eastern Time. Convert that to your local time. If, um, it's easy to hope. To. Now, um, well, what is this cold fission show? What what does he do? The base only all requests show that are uh, that are uh, we um, take requests from the audience and we play them. Hopefully, we're, 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 when you make a request to the theme of the night, like we have uh, on Tuesday, we should have an animal theme. So, if you have a song about animal, make a request. Excellent. Uh, Nitro, Typat. Uh, Typatting has become all the more important. More. Shut up and tell us where the fuck we find you, you bastard. Uh, you can find <laughs> Shut me. up and tell us. <laughs> uh, uh, you can find me over at the base.sc. Uh, I do a show on Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, 4 o'clock UTC. Um, called the Spartan Hour, where I just play music, and uh, it's not really anything special. It's kind of a random show. I just whatever I'm feeling that week. Um, also do the Faux Friday Night Show with Shiver, which is the first Friday of every month, and that is this coming Friday. Um, so if you want to sit and hang out and listen to us uh, joke around uh, less seriously than we did here, then come there, and uh, and then you can hear Nakara. Hopefully, read off the news. I don't know if we have Nakara this week or not. Um, we we managed to make an entire. We managed. We, yeah, we dragged that out for an hour. Thank you, Nakara, for putting up with us. We're sorry. <laughs> oh, by the way, Great I don't know if you guys heard. Minutes. By the way, I don't know if you guys heard, but I'll be on a Friday night show on this coming Friday. I might have Nakara on. Sorry, bad joke. Oh my actually. god, it'll be um, all of these people again. Yeah, yep. basically. So if you like us. And you want to see more of us? Check us out on Friday. Um, and Fizzle will be there, so it's going to be bad. We well, encourage each other to have amazing. bad behavior. Uh, Eric, that's me. Where, what? What? Where can we find you? What? What wonderful things do you do? Uh, really, don't I see? <laughs> that's my thing, and you can find us here and there. Never heard of that place. Um, no. It's, it's, yeah, it's Tell a nice more. place. Uh, we have merchandise. There's merchandise now. Go check it out. Um, 
I wrote the article that we mentioned earlier, uh, and hopefully we'll have another article coming up uh, here soon. Um, however, uh, I should mention next Saturday's show will be kind of a special one. Uh, Eris will be back, and I will be here as well, but I will be in the same window as him. Uh, we are going to be, I'm going to visit Eris for a week, and so uh, we'll have a weird show together where we actually have at least well, hopefully we have five people because I'll be uh, I'll be there in person in the Eris Cave. It'll be pretty terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> now I'm gonna try and do the full Friday night show, but I do have to fly out. I have to leave for the airport at four thirty in the morning on Saturday, so we'll see how that goes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, when your arms um, get tired, uh, they sure will. Yeah. That's it um, for me. Speaking of Eris, he wants me to relay the following information. On Tuesday the 30th, uh-huh. barring unforeseen circumstances, there will be a special stream where he, Jake, 6Fs, and Ian Fixie will be playing some Star Trek Bridge Crew in VR. Uh, that will be on the Relay Twatch, Twatch account. Twatch account, I can't write my own, read my own writing, um, even though I typed it. And what time but, is that? Yeah. To be decided. Keep ah. your um, eyes open on Twitter and things. I have asked him, but he he's, he, he was too cool to give me his time. <laughs> Basically, it's the uh, I, and I have the usual. I have yeah. I have the usual dead air on Wednesday and for Friday night show. Uh, I yeah. I'm still trying to work on some other things before the month's end. Uh, but I think that's just about it now. Yay! Thank oh. you very much for coming. Thank wait, you for wait, having wait, us. Wait, 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 wait. One more. One more. June 14th. You're coming back on postcards. Oh, no oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, postcards <laughs> is coming back on June 14th. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, thank you very much. Take care, all. We'll see you. No, oh, they'll see you next week. Oh, someone will see you next week. In the verse. Bye.